I uh, was uh, raised here in uh, Pasco, Washington. Um, as I was growing up here, um, I grew up in a split home. So my mom and my dad were always arguing and fighting. And um, there was really no attention on me and my siblings. So um, in the middle of all this, uh, I kind of just uh, started hanging out with the wrong crowd. And I was able to get out of the house uh, with nobody really like paying attention to me. So. Um, I ended up becoming involved in this gang and uh, in this lifestyle with uh, drugs and kind of like trying to fit in and uh, be a part of the uh, scene because uh, I, I really don't have a father figure, you know, like my dad's always gone. So uh, these gang members that I'm, I'm being surrounded by, uh, they become uh, my father figure. And I see that um, as they're people that get respected and people that uh, get looked up to in the school. So uh, I, that's who I want to be. And so I end up becoming involved with these gangs. And at the age of 15, um, I get, uh, we get arrested and stuff. Uh, I get arrested for a possession of a firearm charge. And uh, I end up going to do some time for this, uh, uh, for a minor in possession of a firearm charge. And uh, I end up doing some time for that. I get, I, when I get out, I get kicked out of school. And so um, it just kind of uh, makes me get more involved in the gang because I don't have to go to school now. So I'm kind of more in the mix of all the gang stuff. And uh, at the age of uh, 20, I'm about to turn 21, I, I get arrested um, for a felony writing charge and a uh, felon in possession of a firearm. And uh, I end up having to go do a prison uh, sentence. So a friend of mine, uh, two friends of mine got shot. And uh, now they're saying that, now I'm starting kind of catching up on everything that's been going on. And another friend of mine got shot and uh, he got shot in the finger in his head. and. And, uh, but he survived and he was good. But, and as we're driving down Core Street, uh, the rival gang uh, pulls up right next to us. And uh, at first I don't notice it, but I hear like someone yelling and stuff. And so uh, I roll down the window and I notice that it's these guys, you know? And uh, I have my kids in the back this, in the car seats and stuff. And uh, so they're over here and one of the guys waves a gun. And uh, I mean, I had a gun as well in the car at the time, but I didn't want to shoot or do anything because my kids were in the car and so I told my friend I was like hey just just take me home and I kind of sit there and uh with the kids and I'm kind of panicked a little bit too because the situation could have gone really bad and uh, I knew if they would have shot the car um they would have shot my kids or, or just the car alone uh, so this girl um tells me that if uh that I should go to church and stuff like that and so I go to church and I'm at the church and the message that they were preaching um kind of was speaking to me like to what was going on in, in my situation there in that time. I wasn't a person that had a lot of patience, so I want stuff to happen immediately. And stuff's not happening for me. It's uh, already been like a couple weeks and Pastor Tony had given me this Bible and I'm reading scriptures and all this stuff. And and I was like, man, like I've been praying and, and nothing's really happening. I'm already looking for other alternatives to uh, instead of just waiting. Uh, for God to come through to like start selling drugs or something so that I could get myself back on my feet. And that week I had uh, gone with my brother and uh, gone to a dispensary because when I went into prison there was no dispensaries and I got out and weed was legal. So I had gone with my brother and uh, we had been smoking dabs and and uh, now I'm here like a couple weeks later and I know it takes more than 30 days to get clean. and. Um, they call, my probation officer calls me and he tells me like, hey, you need to come in. Um, you were supposed to be here yesterday. And uh, he pulls out a UA cup and he tells me, he goes, uh, can you give me a UA? And so I was, I, I kind of stared at it for a little bit and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, he tells me, he's like, are you clean? And I don't know if he could tell that I was like nervous. And I told him, I was like, oh yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, I'm like, I'm clean. But I remember I was saying this little short prayer and I was like, God, I was like, if you're real, I need you to show up like right now, I need you to help me. So when he gives me the cup, I look at the cup and I'm clean, like like THC is all normal, everything is normal. And um, I'm kind of like, uh, at all a little bit, I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, like I'm clean, you know? As we're driving back home and stuff, uh, my sister was a Christian and uh, she was also trying to get me to church. And uh, I just never really um, went with her. So she's listening to this radio station called Caleb. And, uh, as we're driving, there's this guy, and uh, he, he comes out, and he's on the radio, and his name's uh, Luis Palan. And uh, he's talking about how in the Hebrew language, there's no word for coincidence. And he was saying uh, that, that uh, it's happening is because God's ordained it that way, and that the Hebrews uh, 
believed in that and that uh, so the sooner that we stop saying that it's uh, that it's not a coincidence or that it's luck but we start acknowledging that it's God that the more we'll see uh, the blessings poured out upon us and it just like to me it just hit me and it hit me hard like um, God was like telling me like no and he's like uh, it's not a coincidence like it's me you know like all this stuff that's been happening positively is me you know and so um, I'm looking out the window and I'm just kind of like lost and um, so as we drive home I turn around and look at my sister and I'm I'm like kind of emotional now I'm just seeing God move and like I could just see him that he's all over me he's kind of like pushing me to do like go to church and he's like I feel like he's just answering me like everything that I'm asking is just happening fast and um, I get to church and um, the service that they're having is just it just hits me again and, uh, and God's all over me and um, I just feel like emotional and uh, they, they call uh, people up and they're like if uh, you've never given your life to, to God or to Christ uh, come to the altar I'm just like emotionally broken and I start crying at the altar so uh, I cut out like everything I cut out had the relationships uh, other friends and stuff like that like I go back and uh, I kind of just go back into my word, go back into prayer, go back into having a relationship with God. And uh, moving forward, I cut out doing tattoos because I was doing tattoos as well. And I know that that was something that um, God wanted me to cut out. So that was something that was hard for me because I was making good money. And uh, um, it was uh, something I didn't want to let go because as a kid, I was always like drawing and doing art. So I ended up cutting that out too. And um, I was, I already knew that it wasn't what I wanted, that it's, it's what God wants. And um, that's what brings me joy is doing what God wants. So that's what I decided to do. And that's what I'm going to continue to decide to do as uh, I continue forward.